Okay, all right. So what we're going to do today is this. So yesterday we were looking at um, factoring polynomials, right? Where the value of a, meaning the coefficient in front of x squared, it's just one. So those are relatively simple questions. Okay. So today we're going to, I'm going to introduce to you the third type, which is what happens when that a value is no longer one. So what happens if it's two, three, five, or seven? Okay, so which means that it's going to be a little bit more complicated to factor. All right, so, and we're going to spend three days on that. So let's see what that looks like. All right, let's go. Okay, all right, so let's see. Now, uh, let's jump right into it then. Now, let me show you what's the difference, all right? Or rather, I will ask you uh, what the difference is between today's and yesterday's question. So take a look, right? This is today's. This is yesterday's. And... These are all yesterdays, all right? And these are all yesterdays. Actually, no, those are the day before, so don't look at that, all right? So these are yesterdays, and these are today's, right? What's the difference? Yeah, have you noticed? Each one of these now have a coefficient, right? That's more than one for each of these questions. So the question is this then, right? How do we solve that? All right, so let me just show you. Now, for these, there's a, there's a, there's a different way to do this, meaning you can factor, the, factor out the greatest common factor between two, negative eight, and six. But for the sake of doing this as practice, I would not, only because I need you guys to start thinking. Um, start thinking how to solve this, you know, with some practice rather than just factoring it out, all right, taking that extra step, all right? So now, so, okay, here's the question, right? If based on what we learned yesterday, and there's the bell, if we look at a question like this, right, with b squared, right off the bat, you know that you have to have b times b. That's the only way you can get b squared, right? Now, with this, you really, you, re, you kind of have two choices here. You have two x, right? Because first of all, you can't do x times x anymore. Like that's not gonna cut it, right? Have you noticed, right? Because x times x is only x squared. It didn't, it didn't leave room to account for a two x, two x squared, right? So that means we have to do it uh, uh, slightly differently, but not that much different, okay? So we're gonna take baby steps here. Now, here I need the 2x squared, so one of these has to be 2x, and the other one has to be x. There's no other combination, right? Because 2 is a prime number, right? The only factors are 1 in itself, right? So you see that, right? Now, here's the tricky part then. Now I need to look at the positive 6 here and find two numbers that will give me positive 6, all right? And not only that, when I foil it back out, it will give me negative eight as in, uh, in the middle, okay? So you see what the complication is, is that with because of this extra number in the front with the, with the coefficient, where you put the number three times two or two times three, if it's even that, now becomes more complicated, right? So should I put the two here? Should I put the three there, right? So now, I've looked into I've looked into different methods of solving this and I cannot I gotta be honest, I cannot find a way that's straightforward enough. I have not found a way that's straightforward enough where you don't have to go out of your way to memorize the steps. So I still think that if you if you know how to do this, it's gonna be kind of tough in the beginning. Alright, meaning today. But the more you practice, the more you can actually do this easier and I don't think taking different methods or you know even if they're shortcuts are gonna help you okay so we're gonna like we really have to, gonna have to you know just plow through this now that said all right so I'm gonna try a couple okay so let's see now I'm gonna try two and three all right to get six so I can try two and three and I could try positive two and positive three right because I gotta get positive six right now Right off the bat, I know it's a problem. So again, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna try to do is use my method, which is like just thinking out loud, just show you what my thought processes are, okay? And hopefully you will adopt that think, uh, thinking process. Now, if I put positive two and positive three, 
I know I got an issue because the middle number has to be a negative. There's no way on earth you can have any combination of this where the number in the middle after you foil it, right? You add the two inner terms, right? You're gonna get a negative. So I know that that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna erase this and now I gotta change another two numbers. All right, so let's see. Um, now, okay, let's say it's, it's three and two again. Right, and I'm gonna try different signs. Now I know the number in the middle has to be a negative. So let's see, uh, if I try, now here's the other thing too, right? Because if in order for you to get a negative in the middle and a positive here, the two numbers have to be negative. Shouldn't it, right? Because negative times negative gives you the positive. Yet if you have negative signs here, you could still get a negative number in the middle. Right, so think of this, one of the things I really want you to emphasize is don't get, I know initially some of you will get very stressed out looking for the numbers, and not only that, because there's a time factor, right? Like if you want to do this in a certain amount of time, I can imagine how this could be stressful. So I get it, all right, I've experienced it myself. Um, the other thing then, to combat that, right, to, to kind of help you get over those feelings of stress is to, just to treat this like it's a puzzle like a, like a sudoku puzzle you know like treat this like it's a, it's a game a puzzle that you have to solve that's it all right and when it comes out correctly you know you get like you get points for it think of it like that all right now now here's another thing all right so i could think of um by the way always start off with the with the first value first Okay, always trying to figure out what that combination should be. So what times what would give me 3p squared, what times what would give me 3n squared, so on and so forth. All right, all right, let's keep going. Now, here we got uh, 3 and 2, so let's try, let's try 3 and 2 again. All right, and again, I'm looking at the signs, so let's see. Now, I'm thinking to myself, if I make this a negative and make this a positive, right, I could get 2x squared which I don't care actually, I shouldn't even draw that. I could get 2x squared, yeah, what about the middle, right? So the middle and outside, right? So that's 2x times 2, that's 4x, negative 3x. That's not gonna work, because 4x minus 3x is not negative 8x, right? So I'm gonna try another combo. This time I'll switch the signs, all right? Now I'm doing this slowly, deliberately, all right? I'm doing this on purpose, because I, I wanna show you how, how you should start. Okay, it's a little bit it's a little bit of trial and error, but you're making a very educated guess here. Now let's try again. So let's see that's negative four x, that's positive three x. Nope, still won't work. Alright, so I can kind of tell like those numbers themselves probably are not very good. Okay? Alright, now knowing that, let me try six and one. Alright? Now six and one is great. Because I know that six times one gives me the six, and not only that, somehow, some way, I know that six x and two x, six and two, can give me eight somewhere. I just need to be sure and figure out what the signs are, right? So let's take a look then. All right, I should have left that alone. All right, now I know my middle number has to be a negative, so that means the bigger value here, the six between the six and the one the six is probably gonna be, have to be a negative, right? Because you want a negative answer. Now, on the other hand, fortunately for us, the not the, what? Multiplying two positive numbers is not the only way to get a positive number because you can multiply two negative numbers, right? Now, let's see. If I do negative six times negative one, that's positive six. And if I do this, that's negative six x. And if I do this, that's negative two x, negative six x, negative two x negative 8x so there it is there's our answer all right let me clean it up a little bit all right and that's it that's how you factor that one okay now looking at the next one right if you look at this let's start over again all right i got my factors for 3p squared which is only there's only one possibility here 3p and p right because 3 is a prime number so now again now 5 5 is kind of an easy one because 5 is also a prime number. So I know that it has to be either here like this. And by the way, if you want, ever want to, you could write out the possibilities here too. All right? And I'm going to tell you now, some of you might think, wow, that sounds like a lot of work. Trust me, the more you practice, the less work it will be. 
Okay, so because I actually practiced with all these questions uh, prior to shooting the video, and I was able to solve them pretty quickly. All right, and that's practically without any practice in the last ten years, maybe. Okay, so it's it's totally doable, and once you learn it, you're gonna be able to remember this for a very very long time. All right, now the other possibility is one in five, right? So I'm gonna place them here. Now the signs, I'm looking at the signs again. One has to be positive and one has to be negative, right? If you're gonna multiply them, okay? So keep that in mind, right? You can't have two positive and two negatives, things like that. So let's see, now let me, let me try, okay. So if I put the negative here, and I put a positive here, right? I get three P squared, yeah, that's three, so negative, oh. All right, so that's negative 5p, and that is 3p, right? And that will give us negative 2p, right? See that? So that's it. That's the answer. So let me clean it up for you. Now, again, um, let's see. What was I going to say? All right, let's try the next one. For this one, again, right? Let's see. This is 2n. That's n, right? Again, I need to find a way to get to negative 9, which is either 9 and 1 or 3 and 3. So I'm going to start off with the super basic. I'll just go 3 and 3. Now, 3 and 3 is kind of a good thing because I'm, as I'm writing this, I'm already looking at the numbers because I know this has to be 3n, and that's going to be 6n. I j and I just need a way, like, can, so in other words, can 3n and 6n somehow give you 3n? Yeah, of course, they're related, right? So now I just need to figure out the sign. So I'm already got the number straight, okay? Um, so let's see, negative. I, got, I need a negative, so one of them has to be a negative, right? Because when I multiply them, you can't have both negative or both positive. So one's gonna have a negative sign, one's gonna have a positive sign, right? Now, here's where I come into play, right? I want a positive. So that means whatever happens here, the bigger number has to be a positive and the little one has to be a negative, right? Because you want, you, want the, you want the answer in the middle to come out positive. So I know that the bigger number has to be positive, right? To cover the smaller negative number, right? Now, if that is the case, then this has to be a positive because three times two n is positive six n. And what does that mean? This has to be a negative. Negative three times n, negative three n, okay? All right. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. I miss Mr. Ingle. It's though you make it look so easy because, like, hold on, the light just went off. You know, you, you say, well, you know, Mr. Ing, you make it look so easy because you've been doing this for like, you know, thirty years. And first of all, you're not wrong, wrong when you say that. And second, uh, I only can get to this point with practice. You know what I'm saying? So at some point, the more you practice, the more you get used to thinking like the way I do. The, the, the point is that it's not like anyone can tell me, right, at the eighth grade level that what two numbers can multiply to negative nine, but somehow if you foil it out, you need a positive three, right? Like every, anyone, every single one of you can multiply and add with positive and negative numbers. So that's not the issue here. Okay, so I just want to, I just want to, you know, give you a little more encouragement with that. Okay, all right, let's keep going. Now, here we got 3n, so 3n, n, okay. Now, 4, right, a little bit trickier, right, than like a prime number, but it's not the worst, in the worst thing in the world, because it's just 4, right? It's either 2 and 2 or 4 and 1. So, now, let's take a look then. Uh, now, okay. For this one, I'm gonna try to think my way, all right, uh, into the answer. So I know that this has to be four. So I'm thinking four and one, but here's the problem. If I do four and one, and let me use, let me use my magic marker. Maybe they'll help, right? If I use four and one, then four times three is 12, right? One times N is uh, one. That's not gonna work, because I need 12 and one to make eight. Nope, not gonna happen. All right. Well, I think this magic pen might be the might be the best thing ever for this topic. All right, because I could just write it. You guys can see it, and then when it no longer applies, it's just disappeared. Okay, I'm getting very talkative here. I'm running out of time. All right. Now, 
Let's see. Um, what did I say? I just said four and one, right? So let's try two and two. So now I know already because two times three is that's six n, and this is two n. So I know it's gonna make eight n. You know what I'm saying? So I need I need to just figure out the uh, the the signs. All right. So let me go back to my purple pen. Uh, let's see. What is it? I said two n two, right? Now since this has to be a negative eight n. And this has to be a positive. What's the only possible way? Yeah, if both of them are negative, right? Because negative times negative is a positive, but negative plus a negative is still negative. So that checks out. Okay. All right. Let's do. Let's do a couple more. I'll let you practice, and then I'm gonna give you like a decent amount of practice questions for tonight's homework. I don't want to overwhelm you because this is your first day learning this. But tomorrow and the day after. I'm gonna make the videos a lot shorter, but make the homework a lot longer. Because if you were in school in class, you'd be doing that too. You'd just be working, practicing like crazy, and you know. And then I'll just walk around to make sure everyone's okay. All right. Anyways, let's come back here, right? So I'm gonna set this up. Now I got five n and n, right? This is only my. Those are my only choices. And now let's take a look. Let me get my magic pen. Now let's see. Um. Now I need twelve here, so that means it's it's either one, twelve, two, six, right? By the way, if it ever helps you, list them out, list out the factors, okay? I mean, I that's not it's not like that's cheating or anything, okay? So now let me think. Now I'm thinking four and three because I'm looking at four here with the five to make twenty, but the three n is no good. So that's no good. Okay. So let me think of another two numbers. What if I change four, three? Oh, actually, if I switch, watch this. Four, three, right? Four, th four n. That's fifteen n. Look, it'll make nineteen n. Right? Nice. So it's four and three. All right. So if my memory still exists, all right. So that should be four. That should be three. Since everything is positive, they're both gonna be positive. And you can check your answer. So five n square plus fifteen n plus four n plus twelve. Right? That's it. Okay. So again, I cannot emphasize this enough. I cannot emphasize this enough. All right. Treat this like it's a game. Just you know, hey, look, like it, you know, it's like, and you guys are so smart. Like you can do all this math in your head, and you can just run through it. Like I'll try to insert like a GIF here. All right, GIF, not a GIF. That like you just like you guys are you guys are so bright you can literally just play with these numbers over in your head, like you know just recycling these numbers over and over until you get the answer. Okay, so I think that's the advantage, all right, for us that like we can just you know go through these numbers over and over. Okay, so look at it like a challenge and a game. Okay, all right now. Here I got seven a and a right. Those that's a prime number, so those are my only choices. Now for twenty eight, so the number here are kind of big, right? So it might take us more time. I don't know. All right. Again, don't be intimidated. All right. This is gonna be fun. All right. Now I need twenty eight. So I'm thinking initially. I'm thinking seven and four. And I now here's the thing. I need my number to be pretty big in the middle. You see what I'm saying? So if I'm gonna put a seven, I'm gonna put the seven here. I'm gonna put the bigger number here. Why? Because seven times seven is already forty-nine a, right? It's it's getting me very close to fifty-three a, right? So I'm thinking, all right. So I know seven has to be here, all right. So let's try it. Why not, right? So I put seven here. That means this has to be four. Now let's try that out. So let's see. That's forty-nine a. That's four a. Oh look, forty nine plus four is fifty three. Nice. Okay, so that those two numbers are gonna have to be plus signs, anyways, right? Because they're both positive. Okay, not that bad, right? Now, let me let you try these two on your own, and then I'll just have you guys go do some homework. Okay. All right. So press pause right. Now and then, when I come back, I'll go over these two with you. All right. So press pause right now. Okay. All right, and we're back. All right. So let's see how we're doing here. All right. So here we got three x and x. Now 
uh, how should I say it? If you're in school, this is fine. If you're not in school, when you come back to school, please be prepared or remember to tell me whether you find this helpful or not. Because if not, then I have some other methods that I can show you. But I'm not. I'm not thrilled about doing that because I don't. I think it just makes things more complicated. Okay. All right. So three x and three, right? Because that's that's a prime number, right? Three. Now for eighteen, I need six and three, and I, I I'm already thinking like six and three because I know if I put six here, I would get eighteen, and if I put the three here, somehow eighteen and three can give me negative fifteen, right? So I am gonna now since this number the the middle number has to be a negative. And it's kind of a bigish number, right? I'm gonna make the six negative because I know negative six times three is negative eighteen, and that's positive three x, and that's what I'll get. Okay, and so there's my there is my answer. Okay, all right. Now last one. Two x and x, right? So again, now again the numbers are a little big. All right, that's on purpose, by the way. Um, let's see, thirty two. So I'm thinking sixteen and two. Now, if I put 16 here, all right. So the magic pen. This is when I'm actually thinking. 16 and 2. This would be 32x, and that's just 2x. So that's no good. Not gonna work. I need 20. So that number, those numbers were a little too big. So now I gotta like scale it down a little bit. Now I was thinking what? Let's see, 4 and 8 maybe. Yeah, 4 and 8, right? Because 8 times 4 is 32, and Somehow, right? If I put eight here, what did I just do? If I put, okay, I'm not not sure what happened. If I put eight and four here, right? I would get. What did I just do? What's happening here? Oh God! All right, here eight and four. So that's. Let's see, sixteen x. That's four x. They both need to be positive, so there we go. All right. Okay. Now, uh, again, I sincerely hope that I did good enough, good enough of a job here to show you how to get started, and then uh, go ahead, go to Delta Math and practice for a little bit, maybe like 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. And uh, and I, again, I'm always available extra help. Okay. So let me stop here. Tomorrow we'll. Kind of do this some more. All right, I'll make a short video. You practice a lot, and same thing the day after. Okay, so, all right. Thanks for being so patient. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Omg, that was so good.